Peterson and many men and women alike to him believe it's quite dangerous to teach our young people that our incredible culture is the result of male oppression when we have people like James Young Simpson in, in the mid 1800s who used ether, later chloroform, to help women deliver birth with pelvic defects and deformities. And in fact, the first baby to deliver under its influence was called anesthesia because the chloroform would help women, you know, reduce the pain and to help them give birth. And then another gentleman, uh, Dr. Earl Cleveland Haas, in the 1900s, early 1900s, developed the tampon. And then another Indian man, uh, he his wife, he noticed, was using a lot of dirty rags for a menstrual period and they didn't have access to tampons then. And so what he did is to rectify the problem, he created and distributed a low cost, locally made napkins uh, to help women with their hygiene around their cycle. So th there's, there's many cases of men doing things that have been quite productive for society and women a whole. And the question then becomes is these people, these men who have who have created these things, are they part of the patriarchy? You know, is there some conniving uh, motivation behind their creations that have helped millions of women throughout history? Or is it the fact that, you know, yeah, oppression exists. It, it has existed among a whole class of people, a whole spectrum of people, uh, among both genders throughout history. And maybe that our culture isn't the result of male oppression or women oppression. You know, maybe there's validity in the argument that, yeah, you know, there has been oppression. There has been. But maybe the whole society and culture isn't built on it. You know, maybe we can be friends. Maybe we can find common ground and be like, hey, you know what? That's pretty amazing that these three inventors, they, they did something uh, uh, pretty good. But you know what? L let me be honest. There's probably another three examples that different people can give of men oppressing women, right? So I'm, I'm, we're pretty aware of that. I'm pretty aware of that. I think Peterson is too, that, that, that there's examples on both ends, but let's acknowledge them both honestly and openly. Yes. We could talk. We could absolutely talk about how men and women, and, and different classes and colors of people have been oppressed over 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 history. We can absolutely talk about that. It's important to talk about history, but let's let's not omit certain parts that support our agenda and bias. Let's try and find the open, honest truth instead of trying to support a ideology or some something that that we've ingrained in our identity, we've ingrained these opinions and ideas and ideologies to our identity and for someone to threaten that almost threatens our identity and who we are, let's just try and find truth and common ground and, and acknowledge both sides for in fact a, the most well, the most strong argument, an arguer, is one who can argue the opposite side just as effectively as they can argue their own. And can you do that? Can the people who are saying men are the most oppressive things and then patriarchy is the worst thing to ever happen to our society and culture, can they argue the other side? And oftentimes, they can't and we can't. And that's, that's, that's the flaw of the human being. Not the man, not the woman, the human being.